What a thumbnail. <laughs> we'll be talking about this stuff. UFC news. Sean Strickland. Crying on the internet. Bunch of things. Tonight. On the MMA holes. We'll see you in a second. Wonderful, wonderful. It's time for the MMA Halls! From the 206 Studios of Arizona, we're live with the MMA Wonderful. Welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully you're wonderful, wonderful. wonderful My wonderful. name is Chris Mystic Moss, King of the Dragons, and I will be your host for the evening as we talk about the latest and greatest in combat sports news, preferably UFC news, uh, tonight on the MMA Hole. So if you could hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. Uh, tonight we have a glorious show planned for you, and before we get underway, shout out to my bookie. Dot AG. The promo code is MMAHOLES for a 10% match on your first deposit. Going over to mybookie.ag and win big with our promo code MMAHOLES. The best place to make a bet. Do it responsibly. Thank you to everyone that uses our link in the description for ESPN Plus to watch the UFC. It's still on ESPN Plus. So if you want to watch all the UFC content, whether it's the pay per views, the Fight Nights, the Contender Series, the Ultimate Fighter. Link in the description down below, and we get a little kickback. Thank you to the people that click that link. It's it's very difficult to click a link. You're like, ah, what do I do? Do I, what do I, just click it. Watch the fights. Uh, shout out to UndisputedBelts.com. If you have any custom belts, go on over there, because they got the best belts in all the world. We give them away for goat milk in Fuko Friday. All right, we're going to start off the show with this, considering there's so much to talk about. But um, on this live stream, and if you're new to the program, on Monday nights, we re recap the uh, Saturday night's events. We talk about the latest in the MMA world, whatever the hell's on in the news and combat sports. We just throw it out there and either make fun of it or try to be as serious as possible. Take everything with a grain of salt, okay? Because we are a little dysfunctional and a little weird over here on the MMA holes. So be warned if you showed up late and didn't see our warning sign. Uh, this weekend between clams on Saturday night, Rose Namajunas versus Amanda Hibas is going down, and I've been waiting my entire life to see this fight. Wonderful, wonderful. Sean Strickland on the interwebs this earlier this today put out a video, a, a very morbid video, about his struggles with mental health and, um, you know, a lot of people deal with this. A lot of people deal with the uh, what's going on between the ears, you know, struggling, depression, anxiety, OCD, retardation, whatever the hell's going on in between the ears. A lot of people deal with stuff. And Sean, uh, the former middleweight champion, well, he took to social media because there's no better place than to confess that you have demons than on social media. Wonderful, wonderful. So we're going to play this over here, and we're going to uh, break it down, see uh, what we think about the situation. And I feel for anyone that struggles with uh, any sort of mental health problems, everyone's got it. Some more severe than others. I deal with it myself, but I don't go on social media and say, oh, man. Oh, whoops. I don't do that. I'm here to spread some fun, man. Anyway, here's what Sean has to say. You know what, guys? Man, all week I've been I've been fucked up, dude. I've been I've been on the Twitter saying crazy shit, just just fucking spiraling. I woke up and I and I told my girl I was like, you know, babe, I feel like I feel like I'm a danger to people. Like I don't feel like I should be out in the world, you know. 
And I think that, you know, I have everything. I'm, I'm rich, I'm famous, like I have everything I've ever fucking wanted. And I still am mentally unwell. And I get in these like mindsets to where like I want to burn everything down the world. Like I want to have nothing so I can just fucking lose it and just take out everything on people, you know? And I think that like you guys in a weird way are like my family. Like I've shared some shit with you guys and you guys have shared some shit with me that like I feel more connected with my fans than I think most people feel just because we've gone through, we've gone through a lot together. And man, you know, I have everything I want, dude, and I still struggle with mental health, you know? Okay. So we're a minute and seven seconds into this. I didn't, I didn't get the piano. The first time I listened, I didn't hear piano play, but apparently, I don't know. I must have missed it the first time around. Anyway, um, yeah, listen, we know what Sean has been through. He said it uh, multiple times between the rough childhood, you know, just the rough upbringing that he's had and his, his rise up into being a champion was, was spectacular considering what he grew up um, going through. And we've made actual comments about this on previous streams of the MMA Holes and our second channel, Gummy Gang, on, uh, you know, actually on Fuka, the last Fuka Friday we, we spoke about it, that a lot of times... When you go through some sort of trauma as a young adult or a child, it turns you into a superhero. It gives you kind of like superpowers. It makes you do things that are bigger, better than anyone else in the world. And if Sean Strickland wasn't abused by his father, there's probably a good chance he would never be the middleweight champion of the world. He used that as fire, a fuel to get himself through the gym and, and beat up people and get himself to the level of the highest of high taking out Israel Adesanya, taking the belt. You know, I mean, I have a feeling that that aided him to become who he was, right? So I could just go out there and say, hey, stop crying, bro. You know, you're a superhero. Batman watched his parents die in an alleyway, for God's sakes. You see him complaining? Well, he does, but it's in the Batcave or to Alfred. He doesn't go to social media and be like, ah, you don't see Bruce Wayne going. Anyway, uh, that analogy might be a little ridiculous. But regardless of the fact I do feel for Sean Strickland. I'm not a cold-hearted human being. I deal with shit myself. I just don't go out there and say it. And it is rough for some people out there on social media because I was reading through the comments and I noticed a lot of people were positive. Find Jesus was the biggest answer from everyone. Um, if it only was that easy, right? Um, but no, some people can't find Jesus or some people can't find whatever the answers you have that help you out. You know, some people are just lost souls and, and are afraid to go seek therapy and all that fun stuff. But with Sean Strickland taking to social media, crying for help, this is a big problem. And, and people out there are kind of piling on him. A lot of people in the comments section are like, bro, grow up, move on, stop crying. You know, like you're running around saying all this shit about everyone else, busting balls and being a man and this and that. And here you are crying on the internet, right? So you have that other side of thing. And I got to be honest with you, they have a valid reason to say those things. They're basically taking what Sean taught them. And they're throwing it back into Sean's face. So you're getting the love. You're getting the hate. I'm, it's probably more love than hate, I would imagine. Because I would imagine more people are compassionate than complete trolls out there. But regardless, the trolls are valid as well. Everyone has a valid you know, opinion in this. Because you shouldn't be going to social media and saying these things. You should be saying this to a therapist. And if you have all the money in the world um, and you're, happy, you're not, still not happy, use that money something that other people don't have to pay for therapy, use that money and go see a therapist. It will help tremendously. So that's my opinion to Sean Strickland, but here's the rest of it. And my memory is so short that like, when I've gone through this week, I think to myself, like once I get past it, I think to myself, oh man, like that was a really rough time in my life. But then when I really think about it, this happens multiple times a month, every month, you know? And again, I don't even know why I'm telling you guys this. I've just been kind of going through some shit. I'm fine. I'll be fine. I'm going to go train right now and try to hurt all my friends and all the demons will go away. I just want you guys to know that I have everything I could ever want in the world and I still struggle. So whatever you guys are going through, man, hope you all feel better. Go to the gym, train. Fucking wish you all the best. Okay. He wishes you all the best. So a nice thing. And, and I think he do does love his fan base because without his fan base, he wouldn't be 
who he is. You know, all the all the, the joy that he ha- does, the little joy that he has in life. I mean, it's because of the fans. The fans love Sean, and they want him to succeed and do well. Sean's hilarious, you know, so he's got a solid fan base. They'll always have his back through the thick and thin. So now it's time for you, Sean Strickland. Get help, man. Just just go fucking get help. I mean, and I, I'm wondering, like, what his girl is saying. Is she like, oh, here we go again? You know, like, I mean, I'm sure this is a reoccurring thing. You know, Sean's either wanting to kill someone, murder somebody, or, oh, woe is me, my life is terrible, you know? So, I mean, what is going on here with Sean Strickland? Sean, I hope, I wish you the best, man. I, I hope you seek the health, uh, help that you need, and um, everything will be a lot better. But let me know in the chat what you think about the Sean Strickland situation, uh, or if you're watching the replay in the comment section, let me know what you think about Mr. Sean. Let me let this play real quick. Ah, uh, super chat. <laughs> you think it's low testosterone? Oh, here's Casey. We are proud. Rainbow, we are gay. The MMA holes. Thank Yay. You. We are the gayest channel on YouTube. Proud. All of us are homosexual. It's fantastic. All right. Thank you, KC, for the $2. And if the donations go off the rails, maybe I'll even open up phone lines tonight. You can unlock it with donations. Thank you, KC. All right. So let's see. What do you guys think about Sean Strickland over here uh, taking to the social media world and pouring his heart out? I hate this soft world. Everyone is complaining, crying. I hate Tesla, Green Deal, Greta, transgender. <laughs> Nora was like, yeah, get out, get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't hate Tesla. But uh, Greta, yeah. And uh, some of the other things, yeah. Oh, Sean does drive a Tesla too. So is it, maybe maybe that's the problem. Maybe as soon as Sean drove the Tesla, that was it. He traded in his man card. He got a steady girlfriend and he's driving a Tesla. I think Noro might be on to something here. I I better not get a Tesla because I already got the steady wife. Okay. Could you imagine what his poor girlfriend thinks? Not only does she have to deal with the fucking madman that he is, but she also has to deal with the this guy that's sobbing to the inter like to the internet. Like, like I couldn't imagine what Jesse would have to do if if I was just like, oh, I'm having a bad day. Let me uh let me go on social media and just pour my heart out and how miserable I am. But I have all the money in the world, you know. <laughs> Jesse would be like, she would be mortified. Uh, Chris has Logan chosen his religion. Oh, he's a, yes. He's, he's very devoted to God. Um, today, when he was in his walker, he came over. He's like, and I was like, oh, he must love Jesus. And Ganu needs a, a year of a peer, a near, year off period. Yeah, we're going to get into the Ian Ganu story. We're going to get into the uh, Ian Gary story as well, uh, among the other topics. Also, Conor McGregor did an interview that's all over the place. I was sick of putting Conor on the thumbnail and the title. So I didn't do that. But hit the like button and help us out there. Uh, the electric waves make you gay from electric cars. I mean, maybe. Sean is sitting in a Tesla. It could it could be the gayness of the Tesla might be seeping into his body and overcoming oh, nice. overcoming the manliness. That is Sean Strickland. It, it could be. You, I mean, I, I, I don't know these days. It could be. Who knows what's going on? His girl must not be helping if uh, he's on the internet saying that shit. I think his girl probably was like, oh, here we go again. When you're with someone long enough, you kind of lose patience. And you're just like, all right, Sean, have at it. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure his, he probably didn't tell his girl that he was going to go on the internet. He probably did this and then called up his girl and was like, ah, just want to let you know. I just poured my heart out on the internet. Does, does anyone realize that Sean Strickland sounds like Beetlejuice? Did anyone, like, you ever hear Beetlejuice talk? Just say what I am. You know, like, I, he's got that, like, weird, raspy grunt. Like, is he Beetlejuice? Should he be in Beetlejuice, too? Let me know with ones in the chat. Anyway, let's move on. I hope Sean Strickland gets better. And I'm sure when he went to the gym, he felt like a million dollars. Because here's the best way to handle depression. If you don't want to see a therapist, which I don't see a therapist. I sh- probably should. Uh, but go exercise, right? The best way. You're feeling down. Get off your fat ass and get out there. Lift some weights. Hop on a treadmill. Maybe even punch someone in the face. I don't know. Oh, yeah. You know, I just punched someone in the face. And I'm sure after the gym, you know, when he was done kicking ass, leading his gym on, you know, teaching them great things. I'm sure he felt like a million dollars. He probably also felt like he just blew his load, right? You know, when you have that guilt after you, you nut, maybe it's too early. Maybe you pre- prematurely ejaculate and you, and, you, and you feel like all guilty and down. I guarantee you, once he went to the gym, he felt like that because like, oh, shit. Now I got to do the walk of shame. Now, everyone saw that video of me crying out there. It wasn't Theo Vaughn pulling it out of you. You willingly picked up your phone and says, let's cry to the fucking internet. 
I hope you get better, Sean. I'm just fucking with you. Anyway, let's move on. Enough of that Sean Strickland nonsense. Uh, what do you want, Ian Gary? Or do you want Francis and Gunn? Who are we attacking next? By the way, the Philadelphia 76ers are up on the Miami Heat, in case anyone cares. I don't know why that popped up there. Why is that for me? I guess that is. What do you want? First person to say it? We're going to go into that topic. Let me know in the chat. Do you want Francis? Do you want Ian Gary? Who's coming at you first? You want the cuck talk? I see Francis with a prayer. He's finally got a hug and freaked out. Who do you think? <laughs> the man dance? Yeah. Francis going to sleep. All right. Wow, it's, it's actually kind of mixed. So we got some Ying, we got some Francis out there. Next one that pops in the chat, I'm going to do it. Wh whatever name pops in the chat, we're going to do it. So the last one I said was, so it was Ian by Dale Gribble. What a name. Dale, is that your real name, Dale Gribble? All right, D-Man says Francis Ngannou. Let's move there. Let's go to Jedi Goodman. This man simps over Ariel like no other. But what I do have to say about Je uh, Jedi is he does a fantastic job of clipping a show that I cannot watch. I tried to listen a little bit of Francis before, and uh, let's be honest. Francis is one of the most, uh, s the scariest heavyweight on the planet when it came to the MMA world, right? Uh, you know, coming off that last fight, a lot of people are shitting on him. But still, to me, one of the scariest heavyweights to ever step inside an octagon. Um, but, God, his interviews are like... I don't know. And I, I know Francis has a personality because we've seen it pulled out. You know, he's actually a, kind of a funny guy. And he does have a sense of humor and, and you know, he's got a little bit of sarcasm in him, you know. But I feel like when he does these shows, maybe he feels safe and they're going to give him, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but they can't pull out the personality in this man. But anyway, we're going to go through a couple of clips that was on the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani, your favorite show out there, right? Um, you have to pay to talk into his chat. That's the only way you can chat. You have to pay. Now, you could become a member on this channel, or if you are not, if you can't afford $3 a month, then go hit the like button instead, and you can still chat. But anyway, uh, Francis Ngannou thinks his uh, pickup time to go to the air arena was early. So there was there's excuses coming out of this. And, and I do want to talk to you guys about what is on the thumbnail, the fact that Francis Ngannou will never go back to MMA. It was something that I saw after the last PFL event, and now it is confirmed. So we're going to get into that. Francis Ngannou never putting on the four-ounce gloves and competing inside a PFL cage and octagon. Nowhere! He will stay in boxing, and I'll tell you why in a sec. But before we do that, let's talk about the reasons why he lost to Joshua. Listen, I think we both fight uh, for that 3 a.m. It's not like I fought at 3 a.m. and then he, uh, yeah. Joshua fought at uh, midnight or something. We both fought at 3 a.m. What I, what I think something that uh, happened is that they get me to the arena very early. Mm. Like my pickup time was 10.30 to go to the arena. And then when we get to the arena, they tell us that we have to, we, we are scheduled around 1.45 a.m. Mm. Right now, I do believe, I do believe that in the boxing world, they wanted Anthony Joshua to win. I do believe that Anthony Joshua was the for home field advantage. I do, I do agree with that. I mean, this is the boxing world. Francis is is in hostile territory over here. This is the whole thing is boxing, and here it is, Mister Guy that went the distance with Tyson Fury. You know, we. I don't know if we want this guy. We're just going to use this guy as, you know, a big name in the MMA world. But at the end of the day, we cannot let what happens against Tyson Fury really happen with Anthony Joshua. You just can't do that. You can't have a guy that's 0-1 beating Anthony Joshua. You just can't do that. Now, I'm not saying it's rigged, or maybe I am saying it's rigged. But what I am saying for real, without joking or any of that stuff, is this: the, the cards will be against him for sure. And they're probably going to try to get him there early and make him do media and do all this crazy stuff and drain him as long as he possibly can. I don't know when Anthony Joshua got in the building, but I would I would probably bet my fucking house that Anthony Joshua w had a little easier go, maybe didn't wait around as long as Francis Ngannou. So I will say there's probably some truth within this. And then around one, they came to the locker because they were coming to the locker all the time. Around one, they come to the ro locker, and then J Joshua was still I mean, he hasn't arrived. So he was arriving. Mm -hmm. Around one, I'm like, okay, so like. Think about that. 
Now, if there is truth to this, if there is truth to this, what do you think? I mean, that event was a marathon. That was like, it was long as hell, man. And I didn't even start at the beginning. When we did the fight reaction, we started like as the main card was going on. And it was like, it still was like six hours. You know, it was nuts, man. I think it took six hours until it got to the main event. So you mean to tell me that he is there early, waiting around, cold as fuck, trying to stay warm, then relax, and then stay, get warm again and relax, up and down, up and down, and then whatever media obligations he probably had to do beforehand, which these guys, you know, sometimes cameras slip in or whatever. Who the hell knows? But he was there and Anthony Joshua wasn't. That is a massive red flag. We are fighting in the same time, like, how come do I have And I also understand why people are saying, hey, don't be a baby, don't make excuses, this and that. I, I get that side as well. But at the end of the day, I want to kind of know what's going on here because there was something off. There was a lot. I mean, I got to be honest with you. The people that said that Francis dove in that fight, at first I was like, ah, I don't think so. I think yeah, Joshua just fucking smoked him. And then when I'm watching the replays and this and that, I'm like, something is not right. Something was completely off in this fight. Um, and I don't give a shit if Francis won or lost. I, honestly, I couldn't give a fuck. It's not in the MMA world. Uh, I just want to be entertained. That's it. Um, so uh, there's a lot of weird things that happen here. A pick up time. We receive a schedule, an email from uh, this five week schedule. And uh, for some reason, everything, I was there like at least one hour before. Uh, but the fight, I was there like at least two hours before him. I could have just stayed home, yes. That, but again, because even during the week, we were going to places and had to wait. And Dewey was like uh, uh, complaining, like, ah, yes, they do this kind of trick to get you tired. You know, I was cool. I'm like, bro, come, it's okay. You know, I didn't know how he was, uh, how important that was until like the final day that I have to get there like two hours before. Okay. So I want to know in the chat, what do you guys think? Do you think that Francis Ngannou... Uh, do you think he's making excuses? Do you think there's any truth to the fact that they kind of iced him and Joshua wasn't there? I want to know, honestly. Like, I, And listen, he's not easy to listen to. And I, I kind of checked in and checked out. That's like, I'm just going to let this Jedi guy do the clipping and I'm going to pull it up on stream and react to that because I can't listen to a full interview of Francis. I would like to think that I could get a better, more fun interview with this guy, but I don't know. It's like, it's like watching paint dry. But anyway, uh, okay, Optimistic Cynical thinks he's making excuses. So you think... In a world of boxing, the most corrupt sport of all, you mean to tell me that there's zero truth? Now, there could be slight embellishment, yes, but you're saying zero truth to what Francis is saying there. Curious. Uh, he knows he can't compete uh, in the real sport of MMA anymore. We're going to get into that in a second. Is this, is this a fact? I mean, according to Francis, this is what he's saying. Who knows? There's probably a whole different side of the story. If I would like to hear other people, witnesses to the fact that Anthony Joshua was not in the building, you know, but I mean, this is a thing, you know, this is a thing and, and you know, there's big money involved in this. Uh, bro got knocked out. No excuses. Listen, he did get, he get, he got clipped. There's no doubt about it. He got clipped multiple times and dropped. Right. But at the end of the day, if you're going in there and exhausted and waiting for fucking six hours to fight, you know, a, a 10 round fight, how many rounds was it supposed to be? I mean, there are things that go into play. Now, there is no excuse. You still made the walk. If you felt it was unfair, you could said, fuck you guys and walk out. Now, I don't know. He might have left without his head. Just saying. It's not like he's in the States. You know what I'm saying? He's in Saudi Arabia. God knows what the fuck's going on over there. Listen, you can't just be like, I'm not going to fight. Could you imagine if Francis Ngannou says, hey, you know what? You guys have been icing me way too much. I'm going to sit. I'm going to leave. What do you think they're going to do? Let him go? You know, what do you think is going to happen? I'm, this is, this is unacceptable. I'm going to get out of here. They're, they're going to be like, oh yeah, with a machete. Wait, what? A lot of money involved in this shit. You're getting $20 million. You're going to stay here and you're going to fight, right? Now, listen, it is an excuse. Yes. You lost the fight. You made the walk. You signed the contract. You were in the boxing world. Once you have signed your life away to the boxing world for $20 million, you know, you're going to get fucked in the ass. It's just going to happen. And like they said in there, it's an untrusty business. You saw, you sold your soul for $20 million. So instead of sitting here and complaining, which a lot of people are going to criticize you for, right? You got to deal with it. 
Dean Schumacher says excuses cry baby. You have to deal. You got paid $20 million. You think people are going to feel bad? No one's going to feel bad. But with that being said, he's probably telling the truth. So maybe this is a lesson to people that want to get the quick bag out there and go over to the boxing world. You got to be careful what you're signing. Because what you're signing up, you're playing in their game. You're playing in their game. The, the, everything's going to be stacked against you over here. You got past it. You did the Fury fight. You looked pretty good. You still lost. You still fucking lost to Tyson Fury. Even though I thought you won, you still lost. Why? Because you're boxing. Even if it's close, you're going to fucking lose. That's how this works. But what is Francis Ngannou going to do? He's going to box again. Why? Because he sold his soul. He signed his soul to the devil. He is outside of the UFC. Outside of PFL. We'll talk about that. There's more things over here. Let's play it. Francis is asked. Uh, okay, here we go. If he is leaning boxing or MMA next. Now, when Francis Ngannou. When this fucking guy was in the building. And PFL. The whole marketing plan was. Whoever wins that heavyweight fight, they fight Francis Ngannou. That was like the whole thing. Champion versus champion, Bellator versus PFL. It was so great, right? The worst fucking shit ever. It was a complete mess, a flop of an event. And the whole thing was Francis Ngannou was going to fight the winner. You know what? If Ryan Bader won that fight, yeah, Francis Ngannou would have fought the winner. He would have. He would have fought the winner because he would have ran over Ryan Bader with ease. But big scary Brazilian guy wins. And what happens? Francis Ngannou, not saying he's scared, not saying he's scared of big scary Brazilian guy. I'm saying Francis Ngannou's like, it's not worth, it's not worth the risk to get in there and fight big guy like that. So he walks out of the fucking building. You literally promised people that Francis Ngannou will face the next guy. Francis never gets in the cage and faces off with that guy. Why? Why do you think that is? I guarantee if Ryan Bader won, Francis would have walked right in there, looked down at Bader, collect an easy check, and that's it. But there's risk. You're fighting guys at, what, 6'8", scary knockout power that no one knows? So you mean to tell me you're going to put Francis Ngannou, the big cash cow, you're going to put him in there against a nobody and make that nobody rich? It's not going to happen. Francis is not going to do that. Francis, the business hat went on, and Francis walked right out of the fucking building because PFL signed Francis Ngannou just to be a fucking face. Just to be, hey, look, UFC couldn't do it. Look what we did. Francis will never fight in PFL. Never going to happen. Here's why. What are you leaning towards? Next fight, MMA or boxing? I'm not going to hold you to it, but what is your heart saying right now? Right now? Um, right now, I don't know. You know, like, I started to feel like boxing is now owe me something that I have to claim. What do you, you know? mean by that? Well, uh, <laughs> the way that this fight happened. Boxing owes me something. Boxing owes you jack shit. And here's, I actually don't hate Francis Ngannou. I like Francis Ngannou. I do. I truly do. And, and when he was in the UFC, I enjoyed Francis. I was one of the people that was like, you know what? His performance against Cyril Gan, I was impressed. I was actually entertained when he was fucking grounding uh, Cyril Gunn and dragging him down and humping on him. Like, I was like, oh, Francis is now a, a Nurmaga Madoff? Like, I was into it. I didn't hate it. Everyone was shit on I didn't hate that. And I would have loved to see Francis stay in the UFC. I would have loved to see Francis go over to PFL and, and fight some MMA stuff over there and do things. I would love to see Francis go over to boxing and knock out boxers. That would be great, right? But we're not seeing all that stuff anymore. Francis sold his soul. And he's saying now boxing owes him something. Boxing don't owe you shit, bro. They don't owe you shit. Um, right now, I don't know. You know, like, I started to feel like boxing is now owe me something that I have to claim. What you do you know? mean by that? Well, uh, the way that this fight happened is not the way that he is supposed to uh, or that he should have. So I think now... I need to do it, uh, do boxing now to claim something, mm. you know, to claim my respect, to claim my dignity, to claim everything. You Does know? that make any sense? Did, can anyone understand what he just said there? You know, Ariel didn't, but Ariel's like, just let him talk because this could be clipped. People could be talking about, people be sharing it. Got the MMA holes talking about it. But what 
in God's name did he say? He doesn't even know what he's saying. I think what hap has to happen is Francis has to turn super heel. Like, he's got to go super heel. And just, like, one or two word answers, talk shit. I don't know. He get, you just got smoked, bro. You got to figure something out here. You got to be super heel if you're going to keep fighting and making us interested. You're owing to as a boxer. What do they owe you? And, and the first thing I thought of when, when, they, when they asked him this question, I said, well, you're not coming back to the, the uh, PFL. I, I, we knew this after watching that PFL event. It's not happening. And the contract that Francis signed, there's nothing that says that he has to fight in PFL. There's nothing that says that. It's like open. It's open. Hey, you want to fight boxing? Sure. You want to go to fight circus? Sure. You want to fucking fight in uh, street beefs? Why not? Like it was the dumbest shit they threw out there. They just, it's the only reason why Francis said, Francis like, these guys are fucking idiots. They're paying me all this money just to show up and be a face. That's it. Of course, PFL is hoping that Francis is an honorable guy and would go in there and face their heavyweight champion like they probably verbally agreed to, but there's nothing in writing that says that he has to do that. There's nothing. Francis has, he's calling all the shots right now, and Dana White's probably laughing his ass off. And remember the time where everyone was shitting on Dana? Oh, Dana made a big mistake. Look at that. Remember Dana said this and Dana said that. And they were clipping Dana White saying, hey, guess what? Dana wound up being right again. He wound up being fucking right again. Dude, it's crazy. And PFL looks even worse now. Spent all this money on a guy that's not even going to fight there. It's crazy, man. The first thing I thought of is, listen, you got the Deontay Wilder fight. It's still there. He's not going back to MMA. Have him fight Deontay Wilder, the fight that he should have had originally. Deont Deontay looked terrible in his last fight. Francis looked awful, getting smoked. Have those two monsters go at it, and you know what? You could market the fact that the two hardest hidden guys in the world are going at it, right? Like, you could put some stupid shit out there in Saudi Arabia. Just don't let Francis wait around. He doesn't like that. The way that this fight happened is not the way that he is supposed to uh, or that he should have. So I think now I need to do it, uh, do boxing now to claim something, mm. you know, to claim my respect, to claim my dignity, to claim everything. Okay, we got a donation coming in. Ah, oh, super chat. Optimistically cynical. This is why I stopped sponsoring kids. <laughs> what the fuck? You stopped sponsoring kids? Thank you. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate you. Wonderful. All the donations that come in tonight help us do our dysfunctional show. And I thank you, Optimistically Cynical. All right, anyway, back to Francis. You know, yeah. Uh, MMA is there. I don't, I don't really know. It depends. I think it depends on the time frame of what's happened and the time frame also, like, what is it? But um, maybe it could be MMA first. I don't really know. But, um, what do you mean you don't, you're supposed to fight their heavyweight champion? What are you talking about? What do you mean you don't know? You are not coming back to boxing. It's not happening. I mean, uh, to MMA, it's not happening. It's just, it's just not. Yeah. If it was boxing, is there someone in particular that interests you for the next? I mean, why not? Like, if Ariel was not afraid to lose Francis as, as his guest, right? Ariel would have followed up and said, hey, Francis, be honest with me. Will you come back? What's what's the percentage that you'll ever come back and fight in MMA? That would be my follow-up question. I'd be like, all right, hold on a second. And this is why Ariel gets Francis Ngannou as much as he does. Because he's not asking the real fucking questions. The follow-up question should have been like, all right, what are the what's the percentage that you will fight back in the UFC and in, in PFL or MMA in general? Well, give me a percentage. What's the chances we're going to see you back in, in with uh, four ounce gloves on? Like, let's not beat around the bush. Give me something. He's not going to fucking answer that question, right? Because he's not coming back. And Ariel's not answering the question because he's playing into the whole shtick of this thing. But, um, yeah. If it was There's no way it's 50-50. There's no way, Noro. No way. He's got maybe a 10% chance of coming back to MMA. Because he's getting paid both loads of money. And if he fights that Brazilian dude, th that guy's guaranteed a million dollars to fight him. Right? That guy is guaranteed a million dollars, and Francis is getting paid. Uh, he's not getting paid twenty million, right? Like he's getting paid the, in boxing. Who knows what the hell he's getting paid in in the PFL? He might just make a mill. 
if he's even lucky enough. I don't even know if he's going to make a mil to for that fight. I don't know what the purse would be, but they're not paying they're not paying boxing money, right? So the risk is super high. Now, if he gets another 20, 30 million to fight a Deontay Wilder and get knocked out there, what would you choose? You would choose to fight in boxing. You're getting like 30 million. Or you would take the maybe a million dollars to fight in PFL against a guy at six foot eight with four ounce gloves. It's two million. Oh my God, dude. Like, like we're acting like it's not a lot of money, but compared to 20 million, it is. It's not, this guy's not a man of his word. This guy is like, he's not stupid. He, he conned PFL. And to, and to signing him in a contract that's completely open and nothing says that you have to fight in MMA. There's nothing that has to say it. It's a strong business move for Francis and it probably could be the nail in the coffin for PFL. Boxing, is there someone in particular that interests you for the next step? Mm. Yeah, I think I still have to... I think Tyson Fury is... He's still there. We Could you imagine? <laughs> That's what comes out of his mouth. Could you like if you if before he asked that question, you said to yourself, okay, who's next for Francis and Ghana? Do you think Tyson Fury would be on that list right now? You just got smoked. Your Tyson Fury fight is long gone. You gotta do something in between in order to even think about fighting Tyson Fury again. Because Tyson Fury's running around saying, hey, I had an off night. I didn't take it that serious. Blah, blah, blah. For Tyson to get back in the ring with you and take another gamble, because maybe he wasn't off and maybe you could have Fran you could have his number. Why in the world would you why would you guys be next? He's fighting against Usyk and he's got to do it twice. What are you gonna fight him at 45? When is that gonna happen? Dude, he actually said Tyson Fury. He had a chance to say Deontay Wilder. You're coming off. You're coming off a loss. I'm coming off a loss. Let's see who is the hardest hitting, baddest man on the. Like you could have sold it right there, Deontay Wilder. You look like shit. I look like shit. Let's see who's the better, shittier fighter. But he says Tyson Fury. Mm. Yeah, I think I still have to. I think Tyson Fury is he's still there. We and then this week the. The five week, he was always around, like teasing me, like yes, I don't know, like he was even in the um, he was even in places that I didn't know what he was doing there, and uh, teasing me. So I think um, there's a question mark there. This is a fucking disaster. But you know what? It doesn't matter. He don't give a shit. He's rich. He's filthy rich. He doesn't have to work another day in his life. This guy is rich. His family said he's set. Everything's good. Everything's gravy. So I think what's happening now is he's not even thinking. He's just like, whatever I'm making so much movie money, I could say what I could do whatever I want. You can do whatever you want. But as a fan, you want to like Nganu, but it's very tough to do, right? This guy crying about the loss. He's making boatloads of money. We want to see him go back to MMA. Probably never going to happen. So I guess he's cool with people just not liking him anymore. I, I guess that's what it is. But let me know in the chat what you guys think of Francis Ngannou. Let's see. What else did he say over here? Said he didn't go into the cage after the... Oh, shit. Okay. I didn't hear this. <laughs> oh, God. I did not hear this. Hold on. But uh, I talked to I talked to P, and that wasn't a problem. I didn't go to ca in the cage. Like, when, uh, when the fight finished, I was there, and everybody... Go to the cage, and I was there by my own. I mean, I don't know. It's it's not my show. I don't like decide to walk and go into the cage or something. I sat there for a little while. Upload, uh, upload Renan Ferreira, and then uh, that was it. Then at some point, I I was by myself. I realized I should leave. That's <laughs> what happened. But it's not. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. No, you just left. What are you talking about? The dude was still in the cage. You walked out of the building. You literally walked out of the building. What do you mean you were just standing there? Are you kidding me? Dude's like, dude, his, his nose is going to start growing. It's like Pinocchio over here. Does any, I don't, nobody asked him. You mean to tell me. Nobody asked, bro, the whole promotion was him to f face the heavyweight champion. You mean to tell me that PFL is like, ah, eh, we don't need to bring him in there.
Oh my God. So not only are you not, he is never going to fight in PFL. He just threw the organization under the bus. Now you know why Dana White doesn't want to do business with, with this man. Now you know why. It's, there it is. Now the everything's answered. So all the people that were razzing Dana White, Dana got the last laugh. There you go. He got rich. And Ganu and Ganu's not upset. PFL got fucked. And Dana White's like, this is why I don't do business with this guy. There you go. Holy shit. <laughs> what happened? But it's not like I was unhappy or something. What is Ariel? I would love to know Ariel's response to this. He's just like, <laughs> like he's not like, are you kidding me? Like, that's the first thing. Okay. Like, wait, hold on a second. You mean tell me not one person from PFL, Francis, are you saying? Not one person from PFL asked you to get in that cage. Is that is that the God's honest truth? Like that's I would I would follow up with that. No, no. Okay, no one told you to go in the cage. You would have gone in okay. if you were asked to. No, nobody told me to go to the. Okay, cage. he did follow up. Good. Cage. Okay. Okay. And I wasn't go just going there like oh let me go to the cage or something. No, nobody told me to go to the cage. I never refused to go in the cage. Bro. Oh my God. I can't. I would love to hear PFL respond to that. I would love to hear who can someone hit up PFL, address that. There is no possible way. There's no way. There's no. I don't believe it, man. I don't fucking believe it. There's there's no way PFL could be that ridiculous to not ask him to go in the cage. And it could be. Yeah, maybe he's, he's still concussed. Maybe Joshua. Well, apparently um, Francis said that he doesn't have a concussion after the fight. He got me medically cleared and everything's fine. I did see him say that. I am like, dude, I am, I am, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm at a loss for words here because <laughs> either he is flat out lying or PFL is the, I mean, we know PFL is a joke, but I could not see a misplay like that by PFL. I just couldn't. Let me know in the chat. What do you think? What do you take from this? Because this is nuts. This is crazy, man. You can't make this shit up. The guy's a fucking window licker. <laughs> and Ganu is uh, painfully stupid. Uh, I mean, not really. No, you know, I, I will say this. He's not dumb, man. He's rich. Dude, he is rich. Everything that comes out of his mouth sounds stupid, but he's a fucking multimillionaire. How could you say he's dumb? Unless you have more money than this guy, I don't know how you can say he's dumb. He's not a dumb guy. It's just he's saying dumb things for sure. Like, I mean, there he's just he's reckless right now with his words. Super reckless. He's gonna lose fans, which I don't give, think he gives a shit. You know, I guess, man. Shit. Now we're just starting to see what Dana was like like working with here. But definitely not dumb, man. Uh, shit. He could, he's, he's gotta be straight up lying. He's dumb as shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. Dude's made all the right moves for himself. What guy made, what guy was able to do what this guy has done? You know, like I'm talking financially. Right? Well, I, I don't know, man. I, how could you say Francis is dumb? This guy, he fucking played PFL. Like a fiddle. You know? It's kind of crazy. Now, now he probably doesn't give a fuck about his legacy. I think at the end of the day, this guy was digging ditches somewhere, right? Like, he, like you see all those pictures. And he's like, all I, his dream was to be rich. That's it. He said he, he always wanted to be a boxer. He wanted to be the UFC champ. That was probably all a lie. I think at the end, all his his dream was just to be rich. I think he played everybody, played everyone like a fiddle. It's crazy, man. Man, PFL got they got the worst out of this whole deal. PFL got the worst. Not only not only is he is he not going to fight in their organization, but then he's talking about how they said he they didn't drag him into the freaking cage like it's. Oh. Bonkers. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. If you're watching the replay, let me know in the comment section what you think about Francis. But I think we could all... Does anyone think... Let me know in the chat. Do you think Francis will fight in MMA again? 
before we move on to the next topic. Yes or no? Do you think he will fight MMA ever again? I am a hard no. I don't I don't understand where like it would make sense for him. But let me know in the chat. I think we could all agree on this one. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, we're spamming. A lot of no's. K Dog won yes. If he loses all his money, I mean I mean, then we'll know how dumb he is. If he, if he blows through all his money, then then you are right. He is a little dopey, but I have a feeling this guy's not that stupid. Back to UFC. Holy shit, there's some optimism in the chat. Reality show with Connor and Francis. Booyah! Uh, he's looking for another big uh, payday from MMA. <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how MMA is going to compete with the boxing, the boxing purses. Might doesn't make you smart. Listen. Okay. If you, there, there are different ways of being smart. There's book smart. There's being articulate. There's street smart. There's business smart. There's a whole bunch of ways of being smart. There's a lot of different ways. To be smart at everything, usually you're going to have a massive weakness, right? And Francis doesn't come across as a smart guy when he speaks, right? But you have to remember, this is not this is not his first language over here, you know? Can't get the words out right, you know? Sometimes says the wrong thing here and there. But to say that Francis is not a smart guy after he became a multimillionaire, sometimes you have to be smart enough to know to surround yourself with smarter people, right? And Francis put everyone around him, and he did all the right things to put him in a situation to not only become UFC champion, from digging ditches to going over manipulating PFL and then going into the boxing world and conning everyone over there as well. He's a freaking God knows how much money this man has in the bank. I don't understand how you can't think that that guy is not smart. There are so many different, uh, so many different types of being smart. And I have to be honest with you. Like sometimes being street smart is better than being book smart. Sometimes you got to be a conniver. If you really want to, Sell your soul, which he really did. I mean, he did sell his soul to do this. But I think he's fine with it. I think that's what he wanted. Cunning, says Kainoto. Think about it. You know, to just flat out say Francis is dumb. I mean, shit. That's crazy to think. Like, some people say, oh, Jake Paul's an idiot. Jake Paul's this, Jake Paul's that. Jake Paul's very annoying. Smart kid. Fucking smart kid. There's a lot of influencers out there. Seem dumb as a rock. But they're smart enough to put themselves in situations. Surround themselves with people that are smarter than them. And become multimillionaires. You know? And I think that's what Francis did here. He's not Elon Musk. He's not that. But even Elon Musk could barely talk. You notice that guy? That guy could barely put out a sentence without, you know... Like stumbling and stuff like that. So I don't know. Like everyone's smart in a different way. It's just a matter of how you channel into that intelligence. And then you have retarded people. They, you know. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, Conor McGregor. We got to save the Ian Gary stuff a little bit over here. Because I know everyone's dying to talk about the cuckery. With Ian Gary's response to Colby Covington. But there was something that popped up about Conor. And the this interview. And we spoke about Nganu not coming back. And there's a good chance that... Conor McGregor's not coming back. But we're going to analyze some of this stuff over here from the Mac. And see what's going, what's going down. All right, so he did an interview. Let's see. Uh, who is this guy that he did? The talk Sports? Talk, at Talk Sports. So I don't know who this is, but shout out to At Talk Sports over here for the clip. Okay, so Conor McGregor talks his return. I left on my UFC contract. We're still in the first quarter of 2024. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, I've got, I've got this uh, workload on me right now because I've got the promotion of the movie. I've got St. Patrick's festivities with the alcohol. After that, it's a, it's a uh, closed door. So I get to go in and close the door and, you yeah, know, map my plan. Wait, what did he say about the alcohol? Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, I've got, I've got this uh, workload on me right now because I've got the promotion of the movie. I've got St. Patrick's festivities with the alcohol <laughs> so so basically listen i got this movie to promote and get drunk and do coke 
Then I got to fucking celebrate St. Patty's Day with my whiskey, get drunk, do some more coke, and then I'm going to close the door. <laughs> he's not coming back. You know, listen, to those credit to those who said he's never coming back. Credit to you guys out there because I was not on that ship. I was just like, yeah, you know what? I just want McGregor to come back, but I will take that one on the chin. I mean, unless some miracle he comes back in there, who knows? But when you listen to Dana White say, this guy, would you come back if you had the amount of money this guy has? You know, oh my goodness, Michael Chandler. Someone check on Michael Chandler right now. He's probably got a noose and a fucking stool that he wants someone to kick out. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Ah, oh my God. It's nuts. Say what you will. Francis finding a loophole to leave the UFC heavyweight champ gave him the right value. When you consider he fought Gain injured, in hindsight it was a huge gamble. One loss to Gain and we're talking a whole different timeline. Yeah he. That's right. 100%. I couldn't even believe when people criticize Ngan injured, I mean, um, Nganu injured and how he altered the game plan and still beat Zero Gan. And then people are criticizing that. Like, that was bonkers to me. But, um... You know, it is what it is. I, I think I think what when it comes down to it is a lot of times we look at an athlete or or, or someone out there in the public eye and um, we just judge them immediately without really thinking about it. I do it too. I'll see someone I'm like, oh, fuck that guy. You know, like, you know, like, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to hear it. You sound like an idiot. You know, like, but if you sit there and analyze what's going on, there's, there's, there's a lot of moving parts with a lot of these people, you know, but as fans, as, as people that consume uh, sports, that's how we are. That's how we're wired. So I get it. I understand why people think he's just a dummy or whatever. But, you know, sometimes you just got to take out the mic microscope and then kind of understand where they're coming from. Now, when it comes to a guy like Conor McGregor, listen, this guy is fucking loaded. That's another loaded human being, you know? He got himself to the point where he's making movies, he's got his whiskey and whatever the hell's going on out here. Another con artist. After that, it's a, it's a uh, closed door. So I get to go in and close the door and, you know, map my plan. And then Jim home, Jim home, Jim home. I tell I, you what, though. I would probably be doing the same shit Connor's doing. Francis Ngannou's route, not so much. <laughs> not so much, man. Because, like, the things that he is saying, it does, he just sounds like he's, he's just using people. You know? That's what it sounds like, man. It just sounds, it doesn't, it doesn't sound, I don't know. It's, it doesn't sound like what I would want to do. But listen, with Connor, he's a fucking nut job. He's crazy, man. The money is just absurd. He's wiping his ass with, with fucking big bills. And um, he says he says he's coming back, but how could you believe it? I hope I get some clarity with a date and I can push towards it. I'm sure we, we, we will get something in by year end. You know, we, that's what I'm hoping. You flitted in the past. By year end, I'm hoping we can get something in. What's holding it back? You know, you spent, said, oh, it's St. Patty's Day. That's this, it's that. You said you were going to fight Chandler in, in the summertime. That was a bit, you know, this Chandler's shelf for two years. Are you, are you slipping him some cash? Because I got to say, Chandler's handling this very well. Like he throws out a couple of comments on social media here and there, but Chandler doesn't really say much. And I got to wonder, is Connor slipping this guy cash? Is the UFC slipping Chandler some cash to just keep his mouth shut? What do you guys think in the chat? I, something's got to, Chandler's got to be getting greased up because how could you have this dude who's been sitting standby, who, who filmed the season of the ultimate fighter promised that he was going to fight him for two years shelved. Like it's weird, man. Doesn't, it does not make any sense. But anyway, back to Connor. That's where international fight week, which is the yeah. end of June. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? Yeah, for sure. I would like that. I would love that. If they give me that and then we can go ahead and straight away, you know, for sure. That's fear in Las Vegas looks good as well, doesn't it? To me, did you know the big ball that they've yeah, created? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did call for that also. That that would be great for me. June 29th and then and then the sphere. Look at his look at how he responded to that. It's not the same guy, man. He's like, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> look how he answered that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the big ball that they've yeah, created. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did call for that also. That that would be great for me. June 29th and then and then He's not coming back. That's it, man. It's over. There's a little tear in my eye. Just thinking about it, man. The Mystic Mac is done. That's it. Like, what is going on here, man? It's just like, it's a filthy rich. He don't give a shit. Like, he's just going to keep on dangling it out there in case something 
uh, comes up that interests him. But right now, like, nothing to, to get him back into an octagon. The last time he was in the cage, his leg was snapped in half. Completely snapped in half. So what is going to motivate this guy to get back in there? He already won two titles. Double champ does whatever the hell the double champ wants. What is going to motivate him? What? Unless they dangle an actual belt in front of him, what is going to motivate this guy? I hope, man, I hope Connor comes back. I really do. I truly do. I am not on that train anymore. I am off the train. I don't believe it. And watch that nas- that last Netflix special, which which complete hot dog shit. I got to be honest with you, man. I hated that Netflix special. It was all smoke and mirrors nonsense. At least the movie had some sort of interesting stuff there, but even the movie wasn't that great. And I'm a big Connor guy. This guy's just got to live his life, be a fucking actor, you know, enjoy himself. What, what are we doing with this shit? Because honestly, you're just, you're just dragging us along for the ride. Silly. Wonderful, wonderful. Chandler needs to come out and call him a pussy and a scared little bitch and start talking about his wife and shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, Chandler, I think he's getting paid. I'm telling you, man, I think Michael Chandler is getting slipped some cash to just keep his mouth shut. Like, he throws things out there here and there. He talks a little shit. But, come on. I mean, and apparently, Michael Chandler is pretty well off. He's invested. Whatever paydays he's had, he, he's rolled it in the right situation. So, I don't think Michael Chandler really has to work either. But I, I, there's something that tells me that he's getting greased up. Because this is really weird. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Chubbs. Here comes Sanosi. Mentioning Francis, he took the Connor approach. He made the blueprint getting that popularity and getting to Mayweather. McGregor is the OG of MMA. He showed people how to make the dollar. Also, poor Chandler, if he not getting nothing, dot dude makes 500k a fight. <laughs> yeah, I think Chandler's getting... A little something. I would have to think so. It's got to be getting something, man. Thank you. And yeah, listen, Connor, Connor opened the door for fighters to make more money, but he also opened the door to the nonsense that we're seeing with the boxing world. You know, it, 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 was, it was fun, but at the same time, it's like, oh, shit, man, we're losing some of our favorite stars, you know, to, to, to try to chase money and good on them for making that money, you know? Because when you look at guys like Sean Strickland, that are completely mentally ill. When you look at Ryan Garcia, who's just off his rocker, like all these people are off their rocker, at least let them get these big bags of money. And I was thinking about it today when I was watching that Sean Strickland video, the short that we put up and we showed in the beginning of the stream. At what cost? You know, like I get why Francis did what he had to do. I get why Connor did what he had to do because these guys are getting locked in a cage, getting paid peanuts, you know, especially in the beginning. You're getting paid below minimum wage. Sometimes you're not getting paid at all because of everyone you got to shell the money out to with gyms and whatever, coaches. You know, so it's like, it's a tough path. And when we spoke to Mike Davis, you know, briefly in the DMs, and he says, I just do this because I don't want to do a nine to five. And by the way, shout out to Mike Davis. Had a great performance on Saturday night. We'll tickle that card a little bit. But um, I don't blame him for doing it. It just sucks as a fan because, you know, we, we get fed this, these stars, and we get all excited about it, and then they just get ripped away from us because, you know, they want to make a lot of money. And I don't blame them. I can't blame them for it. Wonderful, wonderful. Here comes Kai Noto. Serious question. What is happening to Connor's face? Look at that oblong, potato-looking, hairless baby honey badger-looking ugly bastard. I think he's contractually obligated to keep people in suspense. They love him in Poland. They bought tickets. You know, that's possible too, Kanoto. We're saying that, yeah, even Jesse said he's not attractive anymore. But that's, that happens with age too. But anyway, um, you know, they're probably doing, giving a little something to Chandler. And if Connor just keeps on teasing that he's coming back, yeah, they might be kicking him something too. Who knows? Who the hell knows? Because Connor's saying he's getting strung along. Then he's saying he's coming back. Like, it's just like conflicting things back and forth. We were promised he was going to fight Chandler. That never happened. Wonderful, wonderful. Just look at him. He's a bloated, pelican-looking thing now. Do you guys really think Connor is going to fight anytime soon looking like that? Connor is old now, 
Busted leg and no longer hungry. It's over Johnny, it's over. <laughs> Just look at him. <laughs> oh my god. What happened to this guy? What happened to this guy? This guy over here. Ah, that guy. What happened to that guy, man? Fucking hell. You know, I would love to say Kainoda is wrong, but I can't. It spam the Connors in the chat. The old Connor, the good Connor back in the day. Now we got fucking movie star Connor. Oh, man. And the sphere. And then, you know, then what? Then, then um, what happens then? I don't know. And I'm sure, I wonder, do they know? There's been no talk about, like, anything. You know, so I, I, I wonder what next. What about, what about opponents? Who do you want to fight? It's good to see Poirier get that win the weekend. That makes this the quadrilogy and then you know, we'll say the real trilogy, the, the finish of it. Put an end to it, to put a finish to it. <laughs> <laughs> to put a finish. Dude, how many times you want to get finished? Bro, how many times you want to get finished by Poirier? You've been finished twice. You want to get finished? You want the trilogy of finishes? Bro, man. Oh, dude, this guy used to be the guy. Now, this guy that's interviewing, is he going to follow up and say, bro, what do you mean he finished you twice? Wouldn't that be the follow-up question? Any normal, any normal human being, wouldn't you just follow up with saying, I got to ask you this, but did you not get finished twice by poor? <laughs> no disrespect. But I think it's finished. No, can we move on from that? Oh my god, I gotta hear that again. This is why I like to listen to this stuff live with you guys. Like, you're getting my first reaction to this. All I knew was everyone's talking about Conor McGregor on here. I didn't put it on the thumbnail, the title, any of that stuff. I was like, I just want to watch this with you guys first. And I'm glad I did. What? Then, then, then what happens then? I don't know. And I'm sure, I wonder do they know? There's been no talk about, like, anything. Oh, you know, so I, I, I wonder what next. What about, what about opponents? Who do you want to fight? It's good to see Poirier get that win the weekend. That makes this the quadrilogy and then you know, we'll say the real trilogy, the, the finish of it. To put an end to it, to put a finish to it. That, that, has, that, is, that is a huge bout right now. He's stuttering. Remember when he didn't stutter? Oh, God, it's so depressing. That, that has, that is. What? What did you say, Connor? That, that, that. Has that is what? Wait, wait, hold on. Did you guys get that? What did you say? That that has that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not Connor, bro. To it. That that has that is that is a huge bout. <sighs> Fuck. He started stuttering when his foot was a balloon. That's when everything started to really get crazy. When he came back and he was like, "My foot was a balloon," and he was interviewed. What was it Ariel? I can't remember who interviewed him. And it was like not the same guy. He's breaking character. Yeah, you know what? He is, I, I truly believe this, that what you've seen on the rise up, that fucking guy eating Jose Aldo's picture in the bar <laughs> with his shirt off going, ah! You know, that guy That guy was a complete character, right? And I, I knew that all along. But now seeing like the real Connor, right? It's like, oh shit, can, you, can we get that character back? You know, this is not what we signed up for. Like stuttering, mumbling. like To put an end to it, to put a finish to it. That that has that is that is a huge bout right now. Mm. So uh, I anticipated the result would go that way, and I was happy to see it. And uh, that's a big one for sure. Obviously, I've got the the, the trilogy. That's what I had said for the sphere. You know, there was uh, ninja jokes. I'm laughing out of pain. <laughs> I've never liked him. Sorry, guys. Well, yeah. Listen, the beauty of the the sport that we watch, unless Khabib is the only one that got slipped through the cracks. But the beauty of it is no matter how much you can dislike an athlete, you're always going to have the last laugh. It's always going to happen because usually when guys are into this world, they stay on a little bit too long and you get to see the demise, right? But with Connor, he's staying on way too long here. Like he's like, he's just trying to hold on to this shit and, and it's just going to get worse and worse the more he holds on, you know? Um, I would love to see him come back and do crazy things, but I do have to ask Ninja Choke. When he was 145 tearing through the division, you weren't into that? Like, that shit was a blast. That was so much fun, man. I remember dancing in the streets with all the Irish, going to events. Like, it was electrifying. It was so much of a good time. 
I never understood why people didn't like that rise up. Maybe it was like Jose Aldo fans. They didn't like the disrespect with him and Jose. Maybe. Maybe that's what it was. And I was an Aldo fan. I actually liked Aldo. But, um, dude, I loved it, man. Because it was like the first we've seen of that. Like we had Chell P, but then Connor took it to this level of just like mind blowing shit, you know? And he saw it, he did it. It was a lot of fun. But now it's like, holy crap. Cold water put on that publicly uh, 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 off the bat, and I wasn't happy with that. So, I, you know, I, I'm not that, I mean. What do you mean the size difference is a joke? Guys, cut right, wait for a reason. What the, that just makes no sense. So, in order, so what Kai Noto is saying there, the size difference was a joke. So, in realistically, you're saying that he's the greatest 145 of all time then. Because you're saying if he, he kept making that weight, he was so big compared to these other guys that he beats everyone, right? Listen, what he did at 145, he drained himself ridiculously and was smoking all these guys. That's called weight cutting. That's what people do. I don't like weight cutting, but it's part of the sport. He never missed weight. Never pulled out of a fight. Think about that. You know, but that was back in the day. That was heyday, Connor. You know, this is, we're talking, we're in 2024 now. This is, this is, we're way far removed, you know? But if you, if you get into a time machine, you go back to that time and you watch the craziness that was Connor McGregor. It was fantastic. This is a fantastic time. Not anymore. I, I, I need, I, I need discussion or conversation because, uh, uh, you know, if I lose interest and I'm not getting any, getting anything back and, uh, I just drift off my man. So I hope I can get something in. He get- looks exhausted, probably from all the press he's doing. And the drugs and alcohol catches up to you. <laughs> wonderful, it's wonderful. a sad day, guys. It's a sad couple of years. According to my sources, Connor has signed up to co-star with Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier and broke back Mountain <laughs> 2. He couldn't pass up the chance to finish off Diaz and Dustin just one more time. Connor doesn't know it, but he's headed straight to video. Uh, well, Connor and Nate is probably inevitable. Whether it's in the boxing world, MMA, who the hell knows? But that, I, I think that is inevitable because now Nate's like sucking him off and it's like, oh, God, help me. Even Nate Diaz is kind of losing it a little bit, right? With that Jorge Maswell fight that's coming up in boxing. Like even now it's like, fuck, man. Like all these guys that were so much fun back in the day. It's just turning into a nightmare. Because of money, and I don't blame them. Like, like as just as a human being, I don't blame these guys for taking the money. I'm just if I'm talking as a fan, it's it sucks, man. To to because th- you like you have to try to dig back into your memory when these guys were fucking cool. Nate just got beat by Jake Paul, for God's sakes. Yeah, there you go. Diaz versus Paul was embarrassing. You know, it sucks, man. We got to just pretend all this shit didn't happen. If you we were a fan of a specific athlete, we just got to pretend. If you're a BJ Penn fan, you just got to fucking. <laughs> Cut it off. You know? It's crazy, man. Sad. Dialed in. What's the noise with Chandler? Because obviously he did tough. Chandler had a car. Like, yeah, if that's it. I would assume that would be the force one. Yep. I would assume that would be the force one. Maybe, maybe Makachev and Poirier fight for the title in July. You know, I don't think Poirier would be ready. He said something else. He was just talking about, like, what the hell is going on here? He was just talking about Poirier. Then he says, yeah, yeah, of course. Chandler's next. And then he's talking. Oh, my God. It was something like that. And then there was a bit going on the head and whatnot after the bell. Maybe some reflection after he got he not got knocked. It was a bad knockout we suffered in that in that in that fight against Gaethje. Mm. And uh, so you just don't know where anyone anyone's at really mentally or or, or whatnot. But <laughs> again, I'll go I'll revert back to you. This that's because that just happened. To, to Whose be- grandmother's living room are they in right now with the fucking wallpaper? Whose room is this? And why is Jeff Nowinski? I didn't know he had a podcast. Why is Jeff Nowinski interviewing him? And that's why it's recently in my head and why I'm speaking on it. It's uh, the opponent doesn't matter. I just yeah, I, I think uh, Michael Chandler will take him when he turns about forty six. Then will be the right time to pounce. Just wish for a bit, a nice run up, you know, a bit of transparency, and let me let me go over it again. I left on my UFC contract. Okay. Is there anything else from this ship? That's crazy. All right, so here's the video. So Championship Rounds put it up on X if you want to see the whole thing. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. But um, what do you guys think about Connor? Oh, my God, dude. It's so sad. How the great have fallen. Uh, Response to Dana White. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this? 
Conor McGregor says he still wants to fight in June, and uh, he also mentioned he wanted to fight Nate Diaz in the sphere on Mexican Independence Day. Did either of those two interest you? <laughs> I'm looking for Mexicans at the sphere uh, on Mexican Independence Day. Nate. Huh? Nate Diaz. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <I'm> not. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Trilogy, the, the finish of it, to put an end to it, to put a finish to it. That that has that is that is a huge bout right now. Oh, we just heard that. This is stuttering. Oh my god. Here's Connor on the floor with Jake Gyllenhaal and a puppy. <laughs> By the way, we, <laughs> we're gonna get to the Ian Gary stuff very soon. We didn't talk about that yet. So if you're just jumping in, hit the like button, okay? Oh my god. Wonderful, wonderful. This is fantastic. Connor is aging badly. Looks like 50 years old golfer on retirement. <laughs> Mumbling totally nonsense when I forgot how to speak English. I will be alcoholic soon. Make some trash movie again. Oh boy. Listen, I didn't see Roadhouse yet. I'm still going to give it the benefit of doubt. I did hear that they asked Connor to tone it down. He was a little over the top for the role. God, I wish they just let him stay over the top. <laughs> I, I wish we just got it straight over the top. Thank you guys for the donations. Appreciate wonderful, it. Wonderful, wonderful. Here's Kainoto coming in. Connor slowly morphing into Mickey from Rocky. Look at him. Look at that HGH blubber nose and that abnormal looking chin on the guy. The leg break ended his career. The drugs he must have used during his recovery include growth hormone. He even stutters. Yeah, yeah, he's been stuttering for a little bit now. I tell you, after the Netflix special, like I was I was traumatized, man. When I saw that Netflix special, being a Connor guy, I was just like, this is it, man. It's over, man. This is fucking nonsense. It's crazy. Thank you, Kainoto. Appreciate the donation. Get ready. I didn't see this yet, but Jake Gyllenhaal and Connor playing with puppies coming up right now. But we got another alert coming in. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Ninja Choke. He fluked Aldo the goat of 145 and didn't give a rematch. He never defended a belt. He always crumbled in fights when he started to lose. He's not a dog. <laughs> I saw him fight Poirier live the first fight. His drunken Irish scum were deplorable fans. Oh, no yeah. way. No way, Ninja Choke. No fucking way. I was hanging with the fans uh, in Boston for the Seaver fight, which was a joke. But anyway, I was hanging with the fans for that. And then UFC 196, where he lost to Nate, I was hanging with the fans. And they were a blast. What are you talking? Ninja Choke. What are you talking? You know, I had a friend that was with us. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate it. I had a friend that was with us that wasn't into the UFC, and he was, like, not into that. Like, he was just like, all right, this is, this is a lot. I was drunk dancing in the streets with these guys, pure joy, and, and a couple of my other friends that were standing on the side. I was the only one dancing with, with the Irish guys. Dude, we were olaying, uh, just laughing, cheers and hugging. Just a bunch of fucking shanty Irishmen. A blast. And then I met a bunch of Irish fans that were like, ah, oh, fuck Connor. And they were funny as all hell, man. Everything about Connor, whether it was the... The anti Connor or the love for Connor on the rise up. It was a fuck. It was a blast. What do you mean, drunken Irish scum, <laughs> bro? They're like the nicest people ever. Did you see the clip of the the guy that was singing to Holly Holm back in the day, and the whole fucking crowd started singing along? It's the happiest group of people ever. And you could get into a fight. You get into a fight with an Irish guy. You're sharing. You you're drinking beers again afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Like they're the best. The best fan base out there is Irish. Best. And I am, I'm not even half Irish. I'm, I'm half Italian. And I'm like, you know, the other half is majority Irish, but not full-blown Irish. So, you know. Come on, Ninja Choke. No way. There's no way. I've, I've also been around some horrible fans. Absolutely horrible fans. They're just scum. I gotta, oh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say. I'm not going to say who I thought was the scum fans because then I'm going to get roasted. <clears throat> but um damn man ninja choke where was this again uh let's see i saw him fight poirier uh live the first fight oh my god the pee head time wasn't jones on that card too that's when yeah connor i'll never forget that fight because i remember i was trying to tell my buds i was like yo you got to see this shit and they were not on board they were not in but to say the aldo fight was a fluke too my god he got starched like fucking clipped on the way in, precision beats power. I mean, what the hell, man? Now, granted, going up to 155 was a problem. Because fighting guys like Khabib that were like bears, 
that could probably do pretty damn well at 170. Um, going up against those guys was was a, a, too much of a jump, I think. But yeah, he was drained. He was beating up the little guys at 145. He came at 155. He could have been competitive, and you know he won. He beat out. Al- Listen, being Eddie Alvarez, I mean that was pretty impressive because Eddie was like legit back then too. You know, he beat some legit guys. But um, man, fluke, damn. But you're allowed to like and who you don't like. I mean that that's all good. But man, I, like. I never understood. It was like a, it was a time of joy when Connor was doing his thing. Like the fans were happy, everyone was happy, no one was getting hurt. Some other athletes, I, I mean, people are literally getting fucked up in the streets, like beat up. I don't understand how Irish people could be gold scum. Uh, my Bellator hero has uh, Connor's uh, ticket for days. My Bellator hero has Connor t- Connor's ticket for days. McGregor literally called uh, the shot uh, and then showed uh, footage minutes before the fight of the exact sequence. So, yeah, I dude, I mean, it was a pretty crazy time. It was a crazy time. Now, granted, the right people were in front of McGregor for him to get to those opportunities, kind of like Israel Adesanya, the same thing. We see it a lot with these guys where they, they, they're they smart in who they put up against them to give them the best shot at getting gold and doing whatever. So Connor didn't have the hardest path. I will, I will admit that. Didn't have the hardest path. To be a double champ, but he did what he did, you know. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's go. Let's look at Connor playing with puppies now. If you think Connor's coming back to the UFC, let's maybe this will change your mind. <laughs> and we'll get to Ian Gary. We'll get to Ian Gary right after this. Oh come on! How dare you freeze? I didn't see this video, but I just can't wait to cringe at this. Oh, have the great how the great have fallen. Here's Conor McGregor. This is like another broke back mountain going on. How are you? Oh, thank you. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, come here, you. And look at Jake Gyllenhaal. Can I suck your dick? Put a cowboy hat on. Oh, buddy. There you go. Oh, my God. They're promoting Roadhouse. This is a movie about bar fights, you know, manly men. But, you know, to show the softer side, here they are playing with puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Save a puppy today. I'm kind of bummed though, I have to say. I was wearing these pants so they could get pooed on. Oh my god, dude, what is happening? Awandi, oh, thank you for being a member for five months. Uh, Double Champs says, Can I sniff you? Yes, of course. I would never deny that. See what else we got over here. Uh, Noro. Wonderful, wonderful. Holy crap. Noro, thank you for the two. Cute dog. <laughs> now, to those of you, thank you, Noro, who think that, oh, watch this, that, that Conor McGregor was a fluke against Aldo. Well, watch again. <laughs> You're all saying he was he was a, the bigger guy in the fights. Well, what is this then? Explain this. <laughs> Explain that. Everyone's saying that he was a weight bully and he was, I mean, to me, with my eyes, I see differently. Casey, thank you for gifting the membership. Appreciate you, Casey. Gifting the membership. Who got it? Who got it? Chris Cushman, baby. Chris Chris Cushman, who was going fucking nuts the other night. Chris Cushman, you got yourself a membership from KC. Thank you, KC. So Ariel had uh, Kavanaugh on. All right, this will be the last thing, and then we're going to Ian Gary, okay? So Coach Kavanaugh feels it's weird for Connor to not get more opportunities, <laughs> but McGregor is ready to fight. More lies. I think it's a travesty what is happening. I think that he's being... Oh, Ariel loves to suck the dick of his guests. He loves... Listen. Being iced out, and I love to see Nate speak on his behalf. I don't know if you saw his uh, tweet. How about that? Yeah. Nate saying free Connor. And I know there's more to it. And I know he has a lot going on. 
But to me, comparing it to the world of boxing, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury don't say, I hope I get the call. He needs to be shown greater respect. He decides. If, if there's no... If there's no 302, 301, 303 on that date, make it, make a number, make a show for him. He has done so much for oh, this sport. Oh, shut up! All right, all right, whatever. Uh, he's just making me mad. Uh, let's see. Gifted a Rolex to head chef of the restaurant for his birthday. Here we go. Look at this. Connor just is <laughs> doing the Lord's work. And I have a, a big gift for you. I want to gift you on your 50th birthday. Doing the Rolex yeah! yeah! All right. Okay. All right. So that's, there you go. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to Ian Gary. Everyone's favorite cuck, Ian Gary. Now I, I want Ian Gary to come on this program because I want to, I want to make everyone a believer of Ian Gary. I want to move everyone to the Gary, the Gary train. I know he's a cuck. Wait, what is this? Comzak commented on Ian Gary's video. My man said legacy of failure. Oh, oh my God. John Jones is commenting because it's anti-Colby. This gay can't make this shit great. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Hamzad says this gay can't make his shit great. How he's going to make MMA great. <laughs> Bro, Comzak, do you even fight? Like, what are you doing? Does this guy even fight anymore? Oh my god, what is uh, happening? Ah, super chat. Okay, here we go. Uh, thank you, strongest black woman. Strong, the strongest black woman. Thank you, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for uh, the one dollar donation. So Colby Covington put out a video. Um, what Ian says to 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 today, Junior, what <laughs> was. Oh my God. I want to play a little bit of Colby's video so you can give you a little context. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> All right, we'll play Ian's uh, video in a sec. And I, I want to get your opinion on... All right, so here is, here's Colby's video. All right, so we played this the other day. We broke it down, and I loved it. I loved the fact that Colby went out there and, and, called a, and responded back to Ian Gary... I think there was a bunch of misses and there were some hits. Like it was, uh, I give it a, a C minus, a C minus. That's what I give it. Um, but um, still entertained, definitely entertained. And it's making me interested and it, and got the response from Ian as well. But here we go. Here's, here's what Colby uh, said after Ian called out Colby Covington. Greetings, nerds and virgins. It's America's champ, the people's champ, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. We're in beautiful, sunny South Florida. Most people, they work 60 years just to get a taste of the good life. This is what I live every day. We just shot 18 holes at Trump International, West Palm Beach. Now we're out here selling on seven figures and salty nerd tears. Usually when you're out here, it's all about fishing. Everybody knows when you're going fishing, it's important to have the right bait. So let me teach you all a lesson about how you bait someone. Ian Gary, you translucent cut. You wanted my attention, now you got it. Everybody knows why you want to fight me, Ian. I'm the biggest star in the division. It's big city, bright lights, and the most attention and eyes you're ever going to have on you when a fight. But everybody knows, Ian, you missed your chance. You had your chance in December to step on the same stage as me and have a microphone and say whatever you want to say to me. But you were scared. You were scared of what I was going to say to you, and you got the sniffles, and you cried your way out. That was just a taste of what I could do to you, Ian. All I did was ask the 5,000 people in attendance how many people banged your wife. It's not my fault every single one of them rose their hand. If you're scared of that, Ian, if you're scared of words, what do you think it's going to be like when you step in a steel cage with chaos? You just went life and death with a guy that does this part-time and is a busboy out back. Dude serves blooming onions for a living. And you went to a split decision with that guy? Now you want Donald Trump's favorite fighter? That's a big step up in competition, Junior. You're biting off more than when you can chew. You know what? I'm a giving man. I'm a kind man. I like to give everyone a chance. So everybody knows him what's in it for you. But what's in it for me? Tell me, why do I gotta go down in the rankings to fight some Casper the Ghost looking Irish kid who has a gold digging wife? Let me teach you the art of the deal, Ian. Let's come to a compromise. If you can meet these three stipulations, we gotta fight. Stipulation number one, you and that gold digging whore gotta turn your Instagram comments back on. 
And if you turn them off before the fight, you forfeit the fight. If you turn them off during fight week or after I beat your ass, you forfeit your purse. Stipulation number two. Ian, we've heard you cry and beg on your knees, but we all know that you're not the boss and you don't wear the pants in the relationship. Layla, you got 60 seconds to convince me and the people why this fight needs to happen. So put your husband in the corner, get on your hands and knees, and beg. Now for stipulation number three, my personal favorite. As you all might have noticed, something's been missing from my MyBookie promos lately. That's because I've been saving that spot for a special someone. Layla, you wanna be a star? You want the spotlight? I got it for you, sweetie. You want your 15 seconds of fame, Layla? I'll give you your 15 seconds of fame right here for America's Pick of the Week. After I beat your husband, because that's a foregone conclusion, I will beat him. He's going to sit in the corner just like he does with all that cuck stuff you guys do, and he's going to watch while you get your 15 seconds of fame. Ball's in your court now, cuck boy. I'll have my lawyers draft up the papers. You got 24 hours to respond. We'll see if you're about that life. Okay. So that's what Kobe said originally, okay? Um, we chopped it up the, when it was released and we did a whole stream on that. So I'm not going to sit here and just chop it up, but we're going to chop up Ian's thing and, um, see what he respond, how he responded to Colby. Listen, it doesn't work if you lose. This stuff doesn't work as much if you lose, but the fact that he is entertaining Ian Gary is good. That is good because Ian's lower than him. Ian's uh, a hype coming up, you know, from the Connor shadow. This guy's talking a lot of shit. He's catching a lot of heat. Uh, Colby already shot, uh, did, took shots at Ian already, so there's history. And I thought that Colby would completely avoid Ian Gary and just focus on old man Wonderboy or someone else that he thinks he could beat. But instead, he's like, okay, you have my attention. I like that. I like the fact that he's like, all right, instead of putting out all these ridiculous fights that just are silly and a waste of time, he's talking about Ian Gary, okay? So you have two guys that are either very liked or very disliked, right? There's really no medium for these guys. It's either like you really like them or you really hate them. I, I don't know many people that are in the middle. Maybe you are in the chat. Let me know. So he comes out and says these things. Like I said, it doesn't really stick when you, you're coming off a loss, but I, I do respect the fact, you know, he's, he's, he's going after Ian here. Um, he's a man of his word, you know, and, he, and he's going in that direction. He did take shots at his wife. I saw in the chat a couple of people were saying, I don't like if that, you know, going after wife or children. I'm kind of with you on that, but it is the fight game, you know? It feels weird listening to Colby talk about his wife, considering Colby doesn't have a wife and he could be gay for all we know. Like, I, who knows with Colby? Like, he pretends he's straight, but there's no proof, you know? So, like, he could be the gayest guy in the UFC. And we, I mean, he's wearing a pink shirt, but no one knows. No one, no one really knows the sexuality of Colby Covington. He could be sucking dick on the side and, and we would have no idea. But it is weird hearing him attack, but it's the fight game. I think everything is is a go. You get into you get to go in there and beat each other up, and the best man wins. You get it out of your system, and that's it. So now, Ian Gary responds, okay? And there were so many things that you could say in this to respond to Colby Covington, where you could legit, like, Colby just kind of laid up the ball for you to dunk on him here. Like, he, he did open that door, and I was curious to see if Ian did respond, what would he say? And he, and he came out with one weak one. And I want to play that one first. Let me see. But it seems like that this one has taken over. There was a weak one where he was like, I'll respond when I want to or some shit like that. Uh, is it here? It's no big deal if it's not. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, let's just let's just do this. <clears throat> let's just play the, the most recent response, okay? Here's Ian Gary responding to Colby Covington. Listen here, Kobe Chaos Covington. You are in no position to tell me what I should be doing in life. You'll do as you're told. And kill! And kill! And kill! <laughs> you gave me three stiff... Uh, now... <laughs> all I'm thinking here... All I'm thinking is, okay, well... Ian Gary has smarter people around him right now. Like, Kobe, I think is... I think he's calling a lot of the shots. And the script that he wrote... You might have like one guy there. I don't know what's going on here, but right off the bat, as soon as I started watching this, I was like, all right, Ian's got way smarter people around him. And maybe this is Layla. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? It probably is. But whatever Layla's got going on over here, she is ready to just fucking flay him. And right off the bat, they go with all of Colby's chokes over there. Okay. 
speculations, all of which had nothing to do about fighting, but we're all talking about my wife. Layla, 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 get on your hands and knees and beg. I don't know how you were raised, but women aren't property and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. You should be focusing on me. I'm the one who's in that octagon with you. I'm the one who's gonna punch a hole in your head. So stop swerving me and keep Layla's name out your mouth. How many of you guys have fucked Ian Gary's wife? You're not America's favorite fighter. What you are is a peak underperformer. You're the only person in UFC history to lose three world title fights, and you haven't got a single win against anybody in the top 15 right now. All right, so I just want to address something in the chat. Ian is annoying as fuck imitating Connor. In the beginning, he did. He did in, uh, impersonate him. He's not Connor anymore. That ship has fucking sailed. This is not Connor McGregor what we're seeing over here. This is a whole different. This is a whole different thing. He's got his own thing going on. The only thing that's the same is he might have an Irish accent, but even that is is got this like I don't know. He's got jizz in his throat. Or I don't know what's going on. I don't know why he's got that weird sounding voice, which is a little off putting. But regardless, there's nothing similar other than them being Irish. Like, what, what is similar here? This guy is, like, smitten for his wife. This guy will jump through hoops for his wife. And then Conor McGregor's smashing whales in, in bathrooms and stuff. Like, like this is it's a way different thing going on here. You know, there's the, the cut Conor, you can call him that. Yeah. So he's an Irish guy that tried to use the Conor approach in the beginning, which was a complete misfire. I agree with that. When he came out, we're not here to take part. We're here to take over Conor, Conor, Conor in the beginning. That's when I was turned away from Ian, too, because I was like, this is, this is not working. But now he's starting to get his own thing. He's got his team around him doing their thing, and he's got the right people. What he's saying here is already light years better than what Colby Covington did. It's shorter. It's right to the point. Let's play the rest of it, and then we'll, we'll chop it up. But women on property and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. You should be focusing on me. I'm the one who's in that octagon with you. I'm the one who's going to punch a hole in your head. So stop swerving me and keep Layla's name out your mouth. How many of you guys have fucked Ian Gary's wife. You're not America's favorite fighter. What you are is a peak underperformer. You're the only person in UFC history to lose three world title fights, and you haven't got a single win against anybody in the top 15 right now. So, Kobe, why should I fight you? Boom! I can think of one reason. I challenge you to an I quit match, where one of us has to say, I quit. <laughs> And whoever says the words I quit has to retire. Gloves off, sent through the octagon, sayonara, my friend. I'm going to be the final chapter in your legacy of failure. I am going to rid the UFC of Kobe Covington for good. And I'm going to make MMA great again. Okay. So when I first saw that, I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> yo, yo, you literally fucking roasted. Colby Covington. Now, I want to know in the chat, who you think got the big, better roast? Ian Gary or Colby? Let me know in the chat. I think Ian fucking filleted him there. Absolutely filleted him. Whether you put aside his fucking relationship or his cuck, whatever the hell is going on in his personal life. Put that aside. From what happened between Colby's talking and Ian talking, who do you think won that? I mean, Jesus. I don't even think it's close. Colby got fucking roasted. Like, legit roasted. He opened the door to get roasted. Now, I will say this. Both of them are doing a phenomenal job. Both of them. No matter how bad the back and forth is or which side you're taking, both of them are doing a great job because I want to see this fight very bad. Like, this is super interesting. has nothing to do with a belt. It's drama. It's it, You got two fan bases going at it. You got two fighters that are just complete polar opposites going at it. You have a young guy coming up. You got an old guy just trying to stay as relevant as possible. Um, both guys I like in different ways. Like with, with Colby, I don't hate Colby. I think he's entertaining. Uh, not fighting. Like unless he's fighting Usman. The Usman fights are pretty entertaining. But uh, mostly, I don't really find Colby very <clears throat> enjoyable to watch. And I got to say this. Ian Gary, that last fight against Jeff Neal, not very entertaining. Kind of safely played just to get your hand raised over there. It wasn't anything spectacular. So now you got both of these guys coming off of one coming off of a kind of boring win and one coming off a boring loss. Let these guys duke it out. See what happens here. Who's the better guy? One man could get their hand raised. I'm curious, man. I'm curious. What is Ian Gary made of? And what is Colby Covington made of? Because 
If you're trying to compare to Conor McGregor, Conor faced no one like Colby on his way up. <clears throat> no one. Ian Gary's slowly moving up the rankings over here, fighting dangerous guys. You know, the, the Neil Magny fight was a very dangerous fight. You saw Neil's last fight. You know, Neil has still got it. So, so the, the fights that are put in front of Ian Gary, yes, he should get his hand raised, but they're very tough opponents over here. And Colby Covington is a massive, massive step up. You know, this guy is going to mentally try to get into his head, and then physically he's going to try to break him, drag him down, and, and suffocate him. You know? So I'm, I'm curious in seeing the, the stylistic matchup. I love the, the trash talking back and forth. Let me break this down really quick. But before we do that, let's catch some of the alerts. Wonderful, Here wonderful. comes Chubbs. Stop getting us to try to like Ian. <laughs> it's never going to happen. He's challenging people to WWE matches. <laughs> Listen, I'm not. That part was probably the fail, and I'll get to that in a second. But there's some WWE people out there. You know why he brought up the WWE, though, right? Because that's what Colby Covington is, a WWE character. I don't know if the joke joke might have went over your head. Uh, but thank you, Chubbs, for two. Wonderful, wonderful. I quit matches from wrestling, bro. That's lame as fuck. All right, Chubbs, the joke clearly went over your head. Let me explain it to you again. Colby Covington is a WWE personality. So what did Ian and the team do? They took the WWE thing and they threw it back in Colby's face. I, Chubbs, you okay, bud? <laughs> Any, if listen, I'll, I got you, man. I appreciate the donations. Thank you so much. But if if you need some help, man, I'll explain it a little bit more. And this is what I've said. This goes back to what I said before. Sometimes we dislike a person so much that we're not even paying attention to what the person is doing. We have no idea. We're just like, fuck this guy. He's a cuck. Fuck this guy. He's got a hot wife. You know, like that's what we just do. That's as humans. It's in our instinct. It's it's in our nature. To just look at someone and say, I just don't fucking like you, you know? <laughs> you know, and I, I do that too. I do that too. I do the exact same thing. There are people, you could ask Jesse, there are times where I'll jump to a conclusion and be like, I just fucking don't like that person. So I get what you're doing, Chubbs, but that's why he did the WWE reference. Noro! Wonderful, wonderful. Big love to MMA holes. Love this autistic community. Exclamation mark three colon forty morning. Laughing, <laughs> relaxing. Thank you most for entertainment. Thank you. Thank you, Noro. Noro coming in. Oh, a crazy time over here. Thank you guys. Seriously, respect. Thank you guys for the donations on a Monday night. You guys are hardworking people out there, and I appreciate you supporting the program. Thank you for being wonderful, wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. Now we're going to break down this video. And I understand why people don't like Ian Gary, but I'm not going to jump on that train because it's easy. It's too easy. It's too easy to, oh, he's a cuck. Oh, he's dating an older woman. It's just too easy. You know? I, I can't jump on that train. I just can't do it. Now, I did jump on the beginning when Ian Gary was doing the Conor McGregor impersonation. I didn't like him. I didn't. But as more people were piling on him and he started moving away from the Conor thing and started creating whatever this character that he is right now, I don't hate him as much. I would like to see him start knocking some people out. I would like to see that. I would like to see his ex fights get a little more exciting. But I don't hate him. I have no reason to hate Ian Gary. I have zero reason. The guy doesn't bother me in any way. You know, he's cringy. So are a lot of personalities in the UFC. A lot of cringy people out there that I could dislike more than Ian Gary. But the fact that people are piling on and a lot of people are capitalizing off of Ian Gary for clicks just to hate him. for Just, just to hate. Like it doesn't make, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I just don't fucking like him. I hate these virtue signaling fuckers out here like women aren't property and you can never spank your child. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, I agree with that. He did drop the ball with the uh, the comment with Neil Magny. He did, yeah. He was trying to paint him in a picture of him being like some sort of child beater and this and that. Um, I'll say it again. When, when, when you're selling a fight, sometimes you say things that are going to offend a group of people. It's just, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And sometimes you say the wrong thing, right? You're just trying to find ways to get yourself in the mindset to want to kill that person, beat that person up in the cage. So when Ian said that, it, it really didn't make any sense because it seems like Neil's a good father, right? But I think he was just trying to get his mind in the, in the situation of trying to take this guy out. Where Ian failed 
is the lack of respect after the fact. Like, I feel like once you go in there and you spend all that time in the cage, you should be respectful. That's where he's different than Connor, too. Connor was always respectful. Uh, the Habib thing was a little whatever. But, um, uh, and maybe the Pori thing. Uh, not anymore. But back in the day, his whole thing was it's a fucking war all the way up until the fight. And then afterwards, it's nothing but respect, right? And then Connor just went off that. As he got older, your wife is in me DMs and all that shit. But um, yeah, I like the fact that people lead up, talk all the shit, and then are cool after the fact. I don't like when people are Jorge Masvidaling and jumping people in the streets. Like that's that's nuts to me. And Ian was wrong in that. Ian's not perfect, and Ian's by far not my favorite fighter. But the only reason why I defend him is because I feel like he takes unnecessary heat. I feel like yes, he's easy to dislike, but at the same time. I think the piling on and the capital, like people capitalizing for clickbait with this guy and trying to find every way to tear apart his family. I feel like that's low, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you should get involved as fans to tear apart a family. Now, if you're, if you're leading up into war and you're actually going to fight that human being, then have at it. You know, all's fair in love and war, but as fans against fighters and trying to tear apart fighters, families, uh, no matter how much you dislike someone, you should never get in the way of tearing apart someone's family. That's that's where, you know, I kind of draw the line. Wonderful, wonderful. Kainoto. Why would anyone think he and won that? It's cringe, especially knowing that he didn't write one sentence of that babble. You think Colby, Colby wrote all his shitty material while Ian got his special ed teacher to help him out. Layla. Lay. On her back. Very fitting. Um... We had someone on, MMA Masters, I won't say the name, I don't want to rat him out, you're going to have to find the interview, but um, that said that Colby has a writer. He knows for a fact that Colby has a writer. <laughs> I don't know, what, kind of, I know what, you, what you want me to say, but he does have a writer, yes. So that shitty, that shitty thing that he did, that was, that's not Colby. Ah, oh, super chat. Name one person Colby has beat. I can't. <laughs> uh, ruthless Robbie Lawler. RDA. All right, let's let's um. Listen here, Colby Chaos Colby. We're gonna break this puppy down, but hold on, we got you guys are going crazy with the alerts oh, here. Let's go, champ. Super chat. Free the chill coming in, dropping a deuce. Ian only interesting because his wife is a smoke show. <laughs> you know that's the thing too. I mean. I think that's the problem. I think the fact that she's attractive drives people nuts too, right? I think, you know, and some people don't think because she's old, she's not attractive, but for her age, she's not bad looking. You know, not many people in the 40s look like that, right? So I think, I think that's another thing that's driving people nuts. You know, sometimes you look across the room, you're like, well, oh, mine doesn't look like that. You know, like, <laughs> you know, or some people look across the room and no one's there, you know? So like, I think that a lot of that's going on as well. You know, I, I think people are just trying to find ways to hate other people because they got something that's a little bit better. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Everyone's got their reasons for hating others. And and I have my reasons for disliking people too, you know. But I don't know. It, I feel like it's excessive. Now, this is cringe, yes. This isn't a perfect response. But when you're going against the one that Colby Covington put out, I would, I would say this is light years better. This team worked better than Colby's team. Do you think Colby was doing the editing for that video? pulling all the clips and, and chopping it up and and the speech. Do you think that's his yacht that he was standing on? Whatever the fuck boat he was standing on over there. Nothing was, nothing's real. These people put themselves in situations where they have teams around them. Ian's team is better. It's that simple. Listen here, Kobe Chaos Covington. You are in no position to tell me what I should be doing in life. You'll do as you're told. And kill! And kill! And kill! Three. So, I mean, that's cold as fuck, showing all the moments, your biggest opportunity in life, and you're falling flat every single time. Every single time you get to the chance of gold, you fall flat in your face. Now, granted, Ian has never been at that opportunity, but he's trying to get up to that situation. So you don't have any of that to show to Ian, right? With Colby, you have that. So right off the bat, throwing probably what burns the most in Colby's face right there. By the way, hit the like button if you haven't hit it yet. We, I only see Wayne Gretzky in the likes, but I would like to see a little bit more. We got a buck 80 in there. Hit the like button. Thank you. 
stipulations, all of which had nothing to do about fighting, but we're all talking about my wife. Layla, 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 get on your hands and knees and beg. I don't know how you were raised, but women aren't property, and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. Now, okay, that line kind of doesn't work because I saw, uh, was it UFC Alien on Twitter? I saw what he posted. Um, let's play it again. I don't know how you were raised, but women aren't property, and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. Women is not property, and my wife definitely is no trophy. Now, a trophy wife is a very beautiful woman that you have on your arm, and you just kind of strut her around and say, look at her, is she pretty? Now, I know it's not something that a woman wants to be called a trophy wife, but to say my wife is no trophy is basically saying my wife is no prize. <laughs> She's dumb fuck. So that line right there doesn't quite work, okay? That is the one thing I will say does not work well. I mean, you got this thing scripted. Probably should have reworded that a little bit. That could have been a misfire over there. Let's play it again. I don't know how you were raised, but women aren't property, and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. You should be focusing on me. I'm the one who's in that octagon with you. I'm the one who's going to punch a hole. So the, he, he fucked up that line. In your head. So stop swerving me and keep Layla's name out your mouth. Okay, then he, then he comes back with a Will Smith line there. You know, it didn't say fucking, but it says out your mouth. You know, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Now, he should have, he could have leaned into the joke. He could have leaned into it. He could have said that, then played the Will Smith clip. He could have leaned into it, you know, but he didn't. So I don't know. Like, all I'm thinking is the Will Smith thing. He didn't put it. I, he could have put it there and it would have been funny, you know, but the approach that he's taking is right. You're talking about Layla, Layla, Layla. You're trying to get under my skin. I'm talking about your accomplishments and how you failed. And he, and he shows the beginning of him, everyone else getting their hand raised. So right there, it makes sense. It could have been scripted a little bit better. Yes. How many of you guys have fucked Ian Gary's wife? You're not America's favorite fighter. What you are is a peak underperformer. You're the only person in UFC history to lose three world title fights, and you haven't got a single win against anybody in the top 15 right now. So now that's a burn, right? <laughs> you haven't got a single win against anyone in the top 15 right now. Dude, that's, I mean, that's pretty bad against anybody in the top 15 right now. So, Kobe, why should I fight you? I can think of one reason. I challenge you to an I quit match where one of us has to say, I quit. Now, see how he's looking into the camera, then they cut to the wrestling over here. This is him, like I was telling Chubbs, this is him trying to lean into the WWE nonsense that 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 Colby Covington's doing, right? Because Colby's a WWE character dragged into the UFC world. And I see what he did it. He's got a ton of attention, big sponsors, gets the big fights. It works. And Ian Gary is trying to take Colby's game and throw it right back at Colby Covington. So it, we're even though it's cringe, yes, he's throwing it right back at him. Quit. And whoever says the words I quit has to retire. Gloves off, sent through the octagon, sayonara, my friend. I'm going to be the final chapter. Now, can we, you know what? Can we do this? <laughs> Dana White, can we make this fucking happen? No rounds. Let him go in there. First one that quits. This should benefit Colby. Because Colby could just take him down, right? Hold him there and just make him his bitch. Right? I mean, essentially, Colby could do that. It's pretty, a pretty good situation for Colby. If I'm Colby Covington, I'm saying, you know what? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm in on that. Dana, why can't we do this? And let me know in the chat, would you like to see this? I mean, I don't know how serious he is here. This is some WWE nonsense that he's saying, but maybe the boss should ask him. Maybe they should send the contracts. I would watch it. Right? I think this should be a thing. No fucking rounds. It's make it like a goddamn street fight with, you know, the rules, the the, the the unified rules. Why wouldn't they let it happen? Why not? I mean, not to die in there. I'm not telling them to die in there. Eventually, you're going to be so fucking tired. We're going to be like, yeah, I'm good, man. We, I've seen it on the street a million times. People are like, yeah, I'm good. I've seen it in hockey. I've seen another, you know, you fight until someone fucking goes down. When you're fighting a hockey game. There's no fucking, there's no rounds. They just fight. They fight until one gets tired. That's it. 
So the commission should be able to sanction something like that. Why not? I love it. Colby, I mean, and if you're Colby Covington, wouldn't you take that deal? That's a pretty good deal. Loser has to retire? Why not? And your legacy of failure. I am going to rid the UFC of Colby Covington for good. And I'm going to make MMA great again. Uh, there's a reason why... Uh, there's a reason MMA is the, the way it is now. I'm not saying every fight. Bro, a novelty. Throwback. I'm not saying every fight. I'm not saying, okay, from this point on, everyone retires. No rounds. This fight. One fight. Novelty. Why not? They're, neither side's going to sign that. Not even Ian's going to sign that side. No one's going to sign that because they know it's never going to happen. So Ian saying that, you know, throwing that out there. This is all, this is all a gimmick. This is all a script. This is all, this is all nonsense. But at the end of the day, they're talking shit. They're trying to sell a fight here between Ian Gary and Colby Covington. And I'm in. I'm all over it. I want to see it. I want to know in the chat. Are you interested in Ian Gary versus Colby Covington? And who do you think is going to win the fight if they actually both agree? Wonderful, wonderful. Gary sounding like a third grader standing in front of his class explaining his science project. Women aren't property? Didn't Layla herself say that their hookup was only supposed to be just that but he never left? Gary killed the next guy's turn. There we go. Uh, Gary kills the next guy's turn. Thank you, Kainote. Appreciate that. Listen, these guys at the end of the day, I have to keep reminding myself, they're UFC fighters. They're not actors. They're not WWE guys. When they're delivering these scripts and throwing these things out there, we just got to take it for what it is because this is not really their job. Their job is to go in there and fight, but they're doing a little bit extra here. So I respect both of these guys. Both of these guys putting this shit out there because this is not in their wheelhouse. They're just having fun, talking shit, trying to make some extra money. So I applaud both Colby Covington and Ian Gary. And I wish every fighter did this. Mike Davis, I wish every fighter did this. I wish every fighter just fucking put it out there. Just fall flat on your face, have fun, talk shit. At the end of the day, you're going to go in there and fight. I want to see more of this stuff. So congratulations to Kobe. Congratulations to Ian Gary. They're both making welterweight great again. Thank you for your service. Both boys. All right, last words on this. We'll touch on the card Saturday night and we'll get the flock out of here. Thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure you smash the like button. More entertaining than O'Malley. I agree. Yeah, both guys. Listen, they're not perfect with their trash talk. Let's be serious here. They're both... You know, we're dissecting what they're saying here, but at the end of the day, they're overachieving, and I love it. Kobe versus Gary intensifies, says Freedom Guy. Kobe won't do it, says Dean. I, yeah, we still have to see if Kobe will make the walk. This, like, it is very dangerous for Kobe to take this fight. Kobe even said it could happen on a co-main or a main event. He knows he's not getting a main event anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, this is not a main event on a pay-per-view. You can't do that. I mean, you could fight night it, but I don't think they want to be on a fight night is Mike Davis the dude out of uh, Tiger Muay Thai I, I don't know where he trains out of actually it's a, he trains out of Florida with um oh, what the hell is his name like I know he knows Perry and he knows uh the Fresh Prince what the hell is that dude's name Philly Fresh Phil Rowe trains with him Mike Davis is a great guy great dude uh, I hate when people keep uh clasping on and then spreading hands Doing that. Kobe is one fight away from his first fight on the prelims. <laughs> More entertaining than Yawn Dickland. Uh, let's see. Get Brutus the Barber out of the... So okay, there we go. All right, thank you. Let's look at this card real quick and then get the flock out of here. Uh, the card that happened last weekend. I'm not touching on this weekend's card because, well, there's some simps out there that like it. No, thank you. But um, anyway, we'll talk about that. As the week progresses, we're going to have no choice. But um, last weekend, Tai Tuivaza. <sighs> Remember when everyone loved this guy? When everyone's like, Chewy, this guy's going to be a champ. Yay. Not anymore. Now everyone's like, BKFC, he's going to... He lost, submitted. Uh, Tabor literally annihilated him. 
and Ty is done. I mean, let's be serious. I mean, he's, what, 31 years of age, so you can always say, well, he could always bounce back, this and that. But do we want to see it? Do we need that? No. These heavyweights are getting more athletic. They're more well-rounded. He came in, like, right at the heavyweight mark. And he looked like a big blubbery mess getting choked out here. It wasn't, it wasn't a good scene. So I think Ty, he can find a home in, like, a BKFC or something like that and, and do really well and be very entertaining and, and have a blast doing it. I say go that route. Power slap. Mentioned before, power slap. By the way, King Ryan says he wants to play Hell Diver with us. So we'll get some UFC fighters, some power slappers on Hell Divers too. And by the way, I should end this stream soon so I can go play it. But on Gummy Gang, we've been playing that and I've been addicted. Shout out to Brian Battle and Ang Lusa for having the weirdest uh, situation go down. Uh, eye poke. And uh, Lusa couldn't continue. Then Mike Bisping got in the cage and... He was talking to Battle, didn't know he was on camera, but it seemed like he was siding with Battle. Lusa wanted to fight after the doctor said no more. So that co-main event was a complete mess. This card was all right. It was okay. It wasn't terrible. It was, you know, it's a fight night. Uh, we had a bunch of finishes, uh, a bunch of upsets on the card. Speaking of upsets, uh, Kennedy and Zuchuku is getting slaughtered. I didn't even reach out to him because I, I hate when, you know, the internet is just, just, just filleting Kennedy for losing to St. Prue. And I got to say this. I mean, St. Prue's a vet. I know he's 40 years of age, but he's a tough guy. We see we see John Jones had a tough time with, time with St. Prue. You know? I know that was years ago, but still. He had a tough time with St. Prue. So, Ovens is still a dangerous guy. It's not like he's the worst fighter in the world. And Kennedy going in there just had a bad night. He lost. He looked like shit. I don't know. He was he was driving me nuts because he wasn't going to the body. It was driving me crazy. He was headhunting the whole time. But regardless, credit to St. Prue. I thought he was done, but he's in the UFC still. Uh, Christian Rodriguez got a very controversial win against Delgarian, and Delgarian took to social media. Now, this guy was a pretty big hype, tra hype train, and um, I picked against him, actually. And I understand why people thought he won with all the control time and this and that. But um, he didn't. He didn't win, and um, I'm actually glad he didn't. Not just because I picked him, and my parlay was blown up anyway, so not money reasons. But I don't like the fact of people just laying on their opponent and just saying, oh, I'm going to get my hand raised now. If you're not doing anything with it, you were outstruck, bud. You lost. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. We move on. But Delgarian took to social media. And uh, let's see. Did Hold on a second here. I want to get his thing. Uh, this guy, is, he's still got a lot of, like, a, a big upside. This kid's pretty good. But he did gas out, it did look like. And he had a reason to why he lost. Everyone has excuses, right? Everyone's got excuses. Where is it? Did he take it off? Hmm. Oh, no, he took it off. <gasps> what? Motherfucker took it off. Oh, damn. Let me see if I can find. Maybe someone clipped it. He took it off. He was accusing uh, his opponent of greasing. And I wonder if someone clipped it and put it on here. Oh, here it is. Notice though is I had to use a lot of strength and energy to keep this guy down. About three minutes into round one, I'm completely dry, and this guy is shining. You know, um, I've grappled thousands of bodies, and I know when people are cheating. This guy was lubed up; he had lotion on or something, and it is what it is, man. So um, the response from his uh, Christian Rodriguez was he was just giving him the finger and this and that, and calling him a pussy. Let's see if I can pull up Christian Rodriguez's thing. So not much respect afterwards. Uh, let's see, Rod. Is this him? No. Fuck. There's so many Christian Rodriguez I won't be able to find him. But anyway, a little, little hostility afterwards. Some people weren't happy about it, but it is what it is. Christian Rodriguez gets the win, and that is three hype trains he beat. Simon, uh, Raul Rosas Jr., and Isaac Dolgarian up a weight class at 145. Christian's been, he's been a problem for these young kids. So um, whether you agreed or disagreed, he's still becoming problematic for any hype train that goes against him. Maybe Christian's the hype train. Maybe he's the guy. I don't know. Uh, Panny Kianzad just ruined the parlay for me. 
Macy Chason actually had a very solid performance with the submission. Uh, um, weathered kind of a storm and, and got the job done and finished. Panny, she's back. Um, but I think still Macy's a can. Mirashart submitted uh, Barbarena. Two Bam Bams should probably go to BKFC. Uh, shout out to Mike Davis. Got a very strong performance. Um, on Saturday night, and I seen, I'm not going to say the name, but I saw a couple of, I saw a bunch of people kind of trashing Mike Davis saying he's mid. Casual. No comment, but Mike Davis looked very good off a long layoff going in there and finishing Levy in the second round. He looked pretty dominating, and I think he's going to be a player at 155 as long as he can keep his head in the game and stay healthy. You know, healthy is, is, is a big thing. So if he could stay healthy, he could be another player at 155, the most stacked and jacked, oh, he was jacked. jacked weight class in the UFC. This fight was a complete shit show, trash, whatever, but Chelsea Chandler got the job done. Just bigger and burlier and missed weight, so fuck her. Uh, Filio got the win. This guy's another player over here. Now he beat Ode Osborne. Ode Osborne hasn't really played at, panned out in the UFC, but Filio is another guy, a Brazilian that's a, a very tough dude at flyweight. So he got a performance at a night. He deserved that. Uh, let's see. Kulabau versus Silva. Split decision win over here. Who cares? Uh, let's see. Amorim. Oh, here's an upset win over here. Amorim over McKenna. McKenna was the girl that was supposed to get her hand raised, but the slight underdog got the job done. First round submission. The arm bar and, and the patience of Amorim is something that really stood out, stood out on Saturday night. As she just waited. It like If you watch the, the replay of our reaction... Like, she was just, like, looking at the arm, like, okay, how am I going to twist this thing? Like, it was almost like everything slowed down for her. And she's like, oh, that works. Solved the puzzle. Submitted uh, McKenna. Uh, Thiago Moises was moist. Got a moist victory. <laughs> um, but real real good job by Moises. Nice bounce back. Uh, Ramirez seemed like he was uh, tough enough to hang around a couple rounds. But in the third, got the finish. So shout out to Moises on that one. Uh, Gregorio got the unanimous decision. And that was UFC Vegas 88. All right, chat. What a show we had. If you missed the Ian Gary talk, run it back. If you missed Conor McGregor, we spoke about him, run it back. If you missed the Nganu thing, run it back. If you missed us talking about Sean Strickland crying earlier in the stream, the first topic of the show, we'll run that back as well. Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. We'll be back on Wednesday night. Remember, the second channel is Gummy Gang. This channel is the MMA Holes. Always hit the like button. It costs you nothing. Big thank you to the donators. Big thank you to the members and the patrons and everyone that supports this program. I commend you and I thank you from Mystic Moss to my people. Don't be an a-hole. Be an MMA hole. Good night! Mm -hmm.